This is the I Read Comic Books podcast, the very best podcast for regular comic book fans. This is a very special episode here in the month of July because today, Danny, my, my good pal from the Next Issue podcast and I, we're going to be talking about the state of digital comic books here in the middle of 2024 as we see it as, as experts in the world of reading comic books. That's what I'm calling us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about all that stuff. So, Danny, I'm very excited to have you here. How are you doing today? Mike, I'm doing very well. Um, I wouldn't call myself a professional yet only because I don't get paid for it. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. I, I maintain my amateur status so I can one day go to the Olympic Games. I like that. Um, I like that. But yeah, no, I'm very glad to be here, ready to definitely talk about this. Uh, I got a lot of thoughts, as as do you, so. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, this this idea has kind of been swimming around in my head since December of 2023 when the Comixology app fully officially shut down and everything got merged into Kindle. And basically, I, I think people who've been listening to this show for a minute maybe know that like my entire like digital comic book reading life, which is the majority of my comic book reading life, kind of like collapsed in on itself. Not because like the Kindle app wasn't sufficient because it it works. It does what it needs to do. I've got my literally thousands of digital comic books that I've been sitting on since the old comicsology days all in my account. I mean, who knows? I probably have lost some in the transition. I think there's, that's an entirely different discussion about like what happened since the transfer over to Kindle in general. But, you know, I've got all these books, they're sitting down there, but it just, it just doesn't feel the same. And so today I kind of want to look into where the rest of the world is in digital comic books. I think the, the gap of this dedicated like omnipotent monopoly application known as comiXology being gone has left this huge vacuum and we've seen a lot of different companies step up so i think we kind of want to go through some of those services maybe we'll do it at the end but i i'm curious danny since comiXology shut down like has your digital reading changed at all oh for sure it's gone so <clears throat> before we, i would you know i would have uh the comiXology unlimited service comiXology all my stuff was there uh, my my Marvel comics that I would redeem would merge onto that account. So like, yeah, most of my digital reading was being done in the Comicsology app or in the web mm -hmm. app. Yeah, uh, got and, the web app. And, and now that's now that space is gone. Like I just, it's not there anymore, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> You know, this is the thing. We did that uh, that Comixology special, like, rest in peace thing uh, late last year on Patreon. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that, go check it out. It's on our Patreon. Uh, uh, and it was, I, I don't know, it was a, it was like a whole thing. Like, it was a lot of me and Tia and Kara kind of just, like, expressing ourselves and how we were feeling about everything with Comixology officially being gone and all but name, pretty much. Um, and so, like, I, I'm still, even in, you know, we're recording this in May. I'm still trying to, like figure out how to like balance between all the different apps and all the different services right like we've got a i've got a marvel unlimited subscription and dc unlimited subscription uh, i don't subscribe to comics lg unlimited anymore because i just don't use it uh i buy things on omnibus like i'm all over the place these days um and it's, it's just like so hard to pull focus now because i don't just have everything kind of like right in front of me like the the lack of convenience has just almost destroyed my will to want to read comic books and that's like super duper sucks like this is what we do in our free time because we love it so much. And I just feel like still very hurt by this loss of this stupid app. <laughs> it, it definitely, not only that, one of the things that I noticed was also the routine, right? Like on yeah. Wednesday mornings, I would get up and since they took the pull list away, I would just go into the marketplace and look at the, like what's new today. What's coming out. Did I miss something mm -hmm. on my pull list? Uh, is there anything that I need to check out? Did they drop any originals that I want to look into? Right. Um, or have they added new stuff to the unlimited service? So like every Wednesday, I would just, you know, get some stuff done, take a look at my phone. Let's see what's on the what's on the new page today. Uh, right. Because I want to get into more comic books, but I also don't want to miss out on anything. Uh, and that was right. just a good central location to really get my feel of everything. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. I, I think like... I've kind of found a replacement for that. Maybe you feel the same. League of Comic Geeks has kind of become that thing where like every Sunday before the show and then on Tuesdays, you know, on the Discord on Mondays and Tuesdays, depending on the week, you know, the folks on the Discord will post all the books that they're pulling this week. I usually try to do a skim through every single week. And I'll be honest, like I pull a lot of stuff on that website and heavy quotes, but 
I don't always buy it all, right? right? Like I because like I have to go to Omnibus or I gotta go to Global Comics or like wherever I wanna be buying my comic books now. And I've tried to like consolidate it to like the Omnibus shop because that seems like the natural successor. It's it's okay. And I think we can talk about that a little later, but sure. like I still I still struggle with this because it's just like the habit is gone and I haven't found like a good rhythm that works the so as well as Comicsology did, you know? Yeah, and and I like League of uh, Geeks is is great. Um, it is still being sourced mainly by like like crowdsourced, right? So I think so. Yeah. Sometimes the information is if there's any changes, kind of last minute, that doesn't get updated as quickly. Yeah. Whereas with uh, obviously with Comicsology, they were working directly with the publisher. So like I would like I would think any of those changes. Would, I don't know. This just maybe me talking out of my ass. Uh, I would think a lot of those any dates uh, that would change or uh you know things that got delayed or whatever the case might be um that would happen pretty much through the system as opposed to like mm -hmm. somebody having to go into the league and I i've gone to the shop with my list and i'm like this one's not here what's going on and then i gotta yeah. ask the shop like did this not, did you guys sell out of this or they're like oh no that got delayed a few weeks or whatever the case so yep even just for that like little things like that yeah, the, I mean, the thing with Comixology is they had just like a full time staff, right? And I mean, I don't need this. We don't need this to be like another in memoriam of Comixology discussion. Yeah. But like, there is like a lot that Comixology did super well that we just don't have access to. And now we have to kind of spread our attention out between multiple services to kind of recreate that. That being said, I mean, I, I have found myself, you know, that being said, I have found myself, you know, like trying to browse the the Omnibus website to try to get things or, you know, like I'll, I'll fortunately, you know, we're, we're lucky we get some comps from different creators and from, yeah. from publishers and stuff. So I, I have like books that I can read. And so now I'm trying to find like a replacement reader, right? Because Omnibus doesn't necessarily import things. And, you know, there's a couple digital comic book readers out there. So I guess like when we're talking about things that you're buying off of like Humble Bundle or Drive Through Comics or, you know, through d publishers that allow you to download things like Vault Comics comics or um and maybe there's one or two others but still yeah if you've got pdfs or or cbrs or whatever i don't, I don't remember if humble still does those uh, are you using a specific app these days because i've mostly been using panels i uh, same here so i used to do uh chunky reader yeah oh uh, god chunky uh, so and good then, but like it just like stopped updating right yeah yeah I, I still have it i got a new ipad and for whatever reason it didn't transfer over completely yeah, uh, and then for a while you couldn't download it from the shop, uh, or maybe I just couldn't find it. I don't know. I eventually found a new copy, uh, but then I looked at panels when when Substack came out. All the mm -hmm. the comic creators on Substack, one of the panels selling points was like, "Oh yeah, we'll integrate with your Substack subscriptions, and anything they drop in there, they'll download automatically." I don't yeah, know that yeah. that ever got worked out. No, it did not. It did not because I've, I've been subscribed to at least a half dozen comic creators and I've never gotten their PDFs yeah, directly. I've always had to download it and then upload it myself. I always have to go at least click on the because I would I was doing this for the Love Everlasting, the Tom King, yeah, Love Last Year Tear book, and I had to go click open in panels like from my iPad still. So it would, okay. it would put it on there, but I the selling point they originally had was like as soon as they dropped there they'll go into your library in panels. I was like, oh, that's a pretty yeah. good deal. Because panels is a yearly subscription. Or at least that's how I do it. I paid. Yeah. The app is a yearly subscription. Uh, and it's it's a good platform. Um, I don't like their sorting as much. Like, there's it's very no. limited. It, it's yeah. Their sorting is really weird because it, it doesn't factor in, like, capitalization on file names. Yeah. <laughs> which is, like, like I, I work in code all day, and I know that that is a problem in general. Like, sorting algorithms that are built into libraries just don't do that by yeah. default. And that makes sense for a multitude of reasons we aren't going to get into right now. Right. But, like, as a user, if I've got a book that's called, like, Love Everlasting with a lowercase l and Love Everlasting with an uppercase l, I expect them to be grouped. But, like, they will end up in different places because lowercase right. l and uppercase have different things so yeah. it's a little funky in that regard um but overall that's probably where i spend i would say i don't know 70 80 percent of my time like yeah especially because you know we're lucky to get comps and, and stuff like that which come most mm -hmm. most of them come in pdf form yep. uh, so we could just import them right in there as well uh it connects to my dropbox which is where i keep a lot of that stuff anyways yep um so yeah panels is usually kind of where I, as we were getting ready for this i was trying to think like if I didn't get stuff from publishers, 
how would I even approach this? Like I, I would be yeah. freaking out. Well, uh, you know, I, I intentionally try to put myself in that position a lot, right? Like, again, we are very, very lucky. We get comps from Image. Um, we get comps from 2000 AD, Titan Comics and stuff, but we don't get them from DC and Marvel and a couple other places. And like, I don't ever, I've said this on the show many, many times. I don't ever want to pay more than $5 a comic book ever again if I don't have to. So I usually do not, right? Um, like Distillery, I, I think I talked about this on one of the most recent episodes of the show. Like their books are like $9. And like, yeah. I only bought the physical edition because I wanted to have like a copy so that I could potentially get signed one day. But it's like, normally just to read a book, you're not getting mean for $9, you know? Um, so like Marvel charging all this different stuff and DC charging all the different prices. I think someone on the discord recently said, Oh man, I just looked at all my books this week are $5 each, right? Like that yeah. new norm is coming up. And I don't even know, maybe it gets even worse as you know, when this episode actually airs. Um, but still like, I don't want to do that, which is why the subscriptions more like, like more for me, but I also just like, I don't want to have more subscriptions. It's like this huge balance of like, I don't even know. Um, so if I was in that position, like, and trying to be, you know, for image books, boom books, uh, vault books, uh, Fantagraphics, uh, everybody else, like Fantagraphics, your only option is you have to go is to go to Amazon, right? That That's yeah. who only sells and drawn and quarterly, I think is the same way. Uh, Dark Horse pretty much is, I think Dark Horse is on Omnibus now, but they are also on Amazon. I mean, everybody's on Amazon, right? Um, but you can also get Dark Horse books through some Humble Bundles, like that Mike Mignola one that just came out, right? Oh, like yeah. VPRD thing, you know? Uh, so that's nice every once in a while. But then, like, Image is, is kind of scattered across, the, you know, the, the, the planes. Some of them are on Global Comics as well. I think Boom and, and Vault and Image, I think, have a lot of their books on Global Comics. So, like, it kind of is, like, pick your your lane and where you want to be in the comic sphere. And that's kind of where you have to like set yourself because I can't imagine trying to juggle between four or five different digital distribution platforms. Cause at that point you might as well just, I don't know, sail the high seas or something because like that to me is easier. Right. Um, and that's the thing we've been trying to avoid for years. We've been trying to push away. And so like the shutdown of comiXology for me has hindered because I just don't feel I don't know. I just don't feel right using it anymore. And so like, I'm trying to balance out and try to find like the right player to me. Omnibus is that place, but it is pretty scattered, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think Omnibus seems to be, I haven't really checked out global comics. So the, the other thing that happened with this was like, I was already, I already didn't really buy a lot of digital comics. Like if I'm going to buy a comic book, I would rather just buy it physically uh, right, because I, I have mm -hmm. access to a lot of the stuff through either my subscriptions or library. We'll, we'll talk about all those things. But if I'm going to purchase a book, I want to actually purchase it. I don't want to license it until you right. deem that I can, you know, take it away. So uh, Humble Bundle is different. I do because you get the PDFs, like unless mm -hmm. you get them deleted from your computer. And even then you can go back and re-download them, right? Right, right. Um, so I, I do Omnibus. I use Omnibus as the kind of my last resort of like, Oh, we didn't get a comp for this this week for whatever reason, or a new book mm -hmm. came out and I won't really want to check it out. Yeah. Um, I like their platform actually on the iPad. It, it works very well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a little clunky, but I, yeah. I enjoy it for the most part. Yeah. Their, their storefront has everything pretty accessible. You can search by publisher. You can search by new stuff. Uh, their previews are actually, it feels like they're longer than uh, Amazon. Like they give you like a couple of extra pages to look at. Mm -hmm. And that's because I, I don't think I think the way that they're doing previews <laughs> and this is just like inside baseball bullshit is I don't think that they're using like the official press like resources. I think they're just literally showing you the first couple of pages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what it does. What it feels like, because I was like, oh, it's because I, I do a lot of sourcing for like uh, to do reviews and stuff for, for videos. Right. Mm -hmm. So I found that Omnibus, if I'm using it day of so they don't put anything out prior uh, as a preview. Right. But the day of release, you definitely get to look at, you know, like five to seven pages of a book. And I'm like, oh, there we go. That's mm -hmm. all I need. Um, so I, I like that. And like I said, they have a pretty, their iPad app, which is the one that I use, uh, very user friendly for the most part. I think even if yeah. you're new to comics, uh, it reminds me a lot of what the first like Comixology kind of started doing. Right. I think uh, Comixology went up like there was a lot of features you were probably a part of those the part of a lot of those things that were i know some of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um but that's kind of like the that's the one i feel like it's at the head of the race right now if you know totally as far as at least as far as paid services 
Yeah, I mean, and it's funny because like global comics, I think, you know, I, I would really recommend you give it a shot. Go buy a book for a dollar. Go get something for free. They do this thing like every week or every other week or something where they'll if you join their newsletter, they're like, hey, here's free five free books or f- high five super discounted books that we recommend per genre. It's it's really, really cool. I think they're doing a really good job from the perspective of like trying to be a curated service that says, hey, here comics aren't just like the big tent. Comics are this entire broad spectrum of things. Now, Global Comics has its own set of problems. I think there's like a there was a push at one point for some AI stuff or, you know, generated imagery stuff, but like that that is an entirely thing. Like Global Comics in itself is not doing that, but they are like okay with publishers doing it, but they like flag it, right? They they have like an entire section if I remember correctly. Um um, and if I'm totally wrong about that, someone email me, ircbpodcast at gmail.com. I'm well, sorry. We'll cover that on our AI, our, on our AI yeah, yeah, yeah. comics episode. Right. When this podcast finally becomes completely AI generated, um, right. we'll make sure that that's fed into the script. But uh, no, it, it's so they're interesting in that they, I think they're trying to do what I think Comixology did really well at one point. And, they, and you know, Global Comics competed with Comixology for a wa- long time, right? Like they've been around for quite a while. Like they have a very established website, their reader on their web. The reader on the web is is incredible like i i like omnibus's web reader it's fine um but i think the global comics one is actually very refined and very well done um they do a really interesting thing with like drm free copies and and stuff like they're actually i think trying to establish a world that is like very pro user um versus just pro comics and i think that there's like a fine line to distinguish there between like i'm just here to license you the copy of this comic which is what omnibus is and there is nothing wrong with that that is the world of comic books digitally um but i do think global comics when they can offers the ability for you as a user to like be in control of your stuff um and i I honestly probably should give them a a, a better try than i have um i just like kind of put myself in the omnibus world just because it kind of felt familiar but like i do know that global comics is doing a lot and they have done a lot to help smaller creators like get their books published and get them on their platform very much like the old comicsology submit program and they have a lot of again curation on their site to try to promote books of a varying array of things not just the quote-unquote big licensed publishers that they have access to well you definitely had me at free comics in the newsletter so <laughs> i'm definitely gonna check it out yeah because uh, i'm always on the search to add more things to my backlog yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I, I again, I, I think I've said this on, on the show before, but like through Comixology Submit Program, I've discovered tons and tons of comics that I never would have taken a second guess at um, just because they were discounted or they were slightly cheap or they were literally just surfaced to me and they sounded kind of cool. You know, um, I, 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 I don't know. I think I just... I, I love and miss that part of Comixology, and I wish that somebody was doing it, and Global Comics, for the most part, is doing it. But again, you have to buy into their system and blah, blah, blah. But they have a very good um, ecosystem. I think that their entire app is pretty well organized. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I could also eat my words on this. I haven't used it in a minute, but like I'm still on their newsletter. I still check it out every once in a while. So We need we need the next uh, heathen to come out of uh, Global I- Comics. Because I like I that. Well, Vault Comics did a big, huge pairing with them pretty recently. They're, they like pushed a bunch of books through Global Comics. So, you yeah. know, it's yeah. they, they're they still making waves out there. It's just not with Marvel and DC. I don't think anyone's ever going to make waves in Marvel and DC ever again. So we might as well just give up on that. And instead, say for everything but those big two, where can I get my books? How right. can I get them in the best way possible? Right. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I don't know. One of the, the other thing I wanted to ask is, you know, on your, on your desktop computer, um, how are you reading comic books these days? Um, because I, I've got an entire array of things and I got a lot of thoughts about checking out comic books, but what, what's your go-to system? I mean, the, the real answer is I don't, uh, okay. because okay. I don't have, out of all the things I use my iPad. So my iPad is just so much better at doing anything I want to do as a reader. Um, the only time I would get on like my computer it would be to really check out comps from like dc because they have you have to go through their system for that yeah um so yeah as far as that i don't since since comiXology and i do i do miss the the nice reader that comiXology had because when we're doing live streams or something like that if you want to show and share your screen and you know you want to talk about one specific panel it -hmm. was that was the way to do it right as opposed to like having a push up my little comic up to the the, the, <laughs> the, the camera um yeah but yeah it's just that kindle one like it looks it's so bad that it just completely <sighs> alienated me from ever even trying to uh so if, I, if i'm missing out on any desktop readers 
uh let me know because even for like the viz manga one like the shonen jump like it's just so much better on my ipad like all the dude well yeah and that's so that's the thing like i used to be i think before i mean i have an ipad and i use it to read comics you know all the time right um the the thing is that like sometimes i'm at my computer and i just want to like check something out before i you know get online or get on the show or um before i i I don't know like i'm just chilling at my computer at you know midnight and i'm like i don't want to get my ipad wherever it is let's just read a couple comics before bed and like the comiXology web reader was great. Um, the Omnibus web reader is fine. Like, I think if you've got comics there, but if you've got like PDFs or, you know, humble bundle books and stuff that you, that you're just sitting on, and I know I am cause I, I'm a psychopath and I bought like the entire, you know, Vinland saga, all of attack on Titan, you know, all that stuff. Um, Listen, you know, we all just bought that Hellboy one, all right? So <laughs> I know. if you didn't buy the Hellboy and BPRD one, when this episode comes out, you probably have missed it, but yeah. it's, it's worth it. Keep an eye out. Um, but still, yeah, it's like you've got all these PDFs. You don't know what to do with them after you've downloaded them. And I so I switched between a couple different things. Like when I upgraded my Mac or my desktop computer, I bought a uh, a Mac mini and I was like, all right, I got to get this loaded up with all these Mac apps. I used to have I used to be a pro with this. Like I used to have like a whole setup and like how I was going to read comics because I was a bad child in college and I pirated a lot of comic books. So I had like a really, really good setup. Um, but nowadays you, you still use these same applications for books that you bought legally. So I yeah. highly recommend you buy all your books, download them and then read them. Um, and so for that, if you have a Mac, I would recommend um, Simple Comic. That's that's what it's called. It's just called Simple Comic. Uh, it's a great reader. It's very adaptable. It's got a lot of configuration options. You can switch between left and right navigation and all sorts of things to try to zoom in and get screenshots and get captured like specific panels and pages and stuff. It's really, really good. Um, there's another one that's okay called YAC Reader, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, and I think there might be a way to like load the Omnibus app on your computer if you have an, an ARM processor or M1 processor. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, I use Simple Comic. And if I think you're if if you're on the if you're on a computer or Windows computer, there is like the go to comic reader for Windows. that has been the same since I was in high school, if I'm not mistaken. Um, C Display EX, I yeah. think. Or, yeah. That's the one that's been around for forever and it is still the goat, right? Like there is yeah. no one who's made a better one because it is the most highly configurable, powerful comic book reader that you can ever use. Like I used to use that as inspiration when I worked at Comixology about how we could make the web reader better because I was like, what features can we rip off from these guys? You know, um, unfortunately, we never got there. But nonetheless, like that is the goat as far as uh, comic book readers are concerned and simple comic for me, it takes a close second, you know? Um, but yeah, otherwise it's like, you know, they're PDFs or we're going through like the Marvel Unlimited site or we're going through the com- or DC Universe, you know, website or whatever. Or, you know, I think there's a couple other publishers that have their own reader like Vault Comics, I think has, or they offer PDFs, but you can also read them on Global Comics. Distillery, if you've made the, I, I don't know, if you've had the thought to ever buy a comic book digitally from Distillery, I believe they have a web reader. Uh, I don't. I have a I copy of. So I, the, I haven't checked I out know. their stuff. They keep pushing their digital because it's like you can resell it, which is still a concept <laughs> that is very weird and foreign to me. But like, uh, listen to each their own. I'm I'm yeah, taking yeah, yeah. my hands off of it. You know, if someone listen, wants to go do that, Godspeed. But like, yeah, that's no. Not for I, me. Once again, I like their physical books. I don't know that I'll ever get into their digital stuff. Um, but yeah, man, the the problem is with the publishers. It feels like. They were only working on the readers as long as Comixology was probably helping them out or like, and then when that stopped, they also stopped. So it mm-hmm. is very hit or miss. You know, I, I do want to say, I believe, uh, 2000 AD has a pretty solid reader, but it's only for their stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've tried it, but I've tried that on desktop and on the iPad, uh, and it's pretty good. And I've, they have a, a vast library of stuff that you can dig into um so yeah some of them some some publishers put a little bit more work into their stuff but yeah as far as in some of these uh smaller publishers like dynamite i don't even know how you buy a digital comic from them Uh, i think it's just through amazon i think that's like the only option you have at this point and that's if they've updated it i I remember when (laughs) (laughs) i remember when thundercats number one came out yeah um i wanted to read it to do a review for it and i couldn't this was before I were getting some of their comps and like I couldn't go to my store until like noon that day. And I'm here sitting like just Googling as much as I can. Like, how do I legally read 
Thundercats number one from <laughs> yeah. Dynamite. I went to their website. They pointed me to Amazon, but it wasn't there. Uh-huh. Uh, I checked. Uh, I checked the other Global Comics Omnibus. Like, I guess they didn't have a partnership, but they don't have their Dynamite books yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, holy moly! How can I not read in the year 2024? How can I not read Thundercats number one from I... Dynamite Comics online legally? Yeah. Anyway, legally, legally being the keyword. Legally right? is the keyword. Right. I mean, that that is the unfortunate situation that we're in, is that, like, I think for, you know, it, it's not to say that, like, comics are dead because Comixology, the app died, the physical, you know, the app for the iPad and iPhone app died, right? I, I don't think that they are. Clearly, they're not, right? Like, we've got actual players in the space. Um, I think, unfortunately, they suffer from the same problem that comic shops suffer from, that the in crowd are the only people that really know about them, right? Right. Um, like a random person is not going to find Omnibus and go, oh, what's this little website? What are all these things? You know, yeah. they're going to be turned off because it is just a thousand comics thrown in your face. You know, um, the, the big problem is that the SEO for those pirate websites is so good. It's that whenever so good. You, whenever you Google read comics online, like you get 10 illegal websites before you get any other like any of these yeah. other um, like actual services. Right. And if I'm somebody that's trying to get into comics, first of all, I click on that thing and it gives me a pop up for like this medicine that hasn't been approved by any FDA. <laughs> Take the agency. tiger's yeah. belly jaw, right? Like, <laughs> no, like no yeah. I'm out. Comics yeah. is definitely not for me. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's but, a shame. But people use those sites all the time, right? Like, and it's for that specific reason. Like, read Captain America online brings up one of those pirate websites, right? I know it does because I've tried to search for it because Marvel's search is awful. And so I'm, I'm just trying to find, hey, is this book available on your digital service because I can't use the search in app. So I'm going to try to use Google to try to find it on your website because your search is awful. Like it ends up bringing me to a pirate site and I'm just yeah. like, I could just read it here. <laughs> and I and I don't, right? Like I, I do try to not use those sites. Like in rare circumstances, I needed to get a cover for something. So I went to a website like that because that was the easiest way to get it in high res. Everywhere else had it for like 300 by 800. And I was like, that's just not big enough, you know? That's crazy um, that the the high res is not even from the legitimate source. No, it, 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 oh, Danny, this is an entire bonkers thing that I wish that I wish that some of these companies would just take all of the SEO hacks that these pirate websites are using and just use them their, themselves. Yeah. And just like put let Vault Comics be the place where you find, you know, all of their books to read. Um, but yeah, I think I think though this this brings me to the next thing that I want to talk about though, which is like Marvel Unlimited and DC Universe Infinite or Infinite Universe, whatever it's called. Sure. I can never remember. Um, you and I, I think we both have access to those. Like I've got a subscription to that. Um, we, there's a DC subscription as well. And so like I, I've used both. Um, and I'm kind of satisfied with them, but like, I'm curious what your take is before I go into my, I like this, but I don't, you know, argument that I have about everything these days. <laughs> so I probably have had Marvel Unlimited for over a decade. The only time I canceled wow. it was when, uh, when they stopped giving away digital codes for like four months. Oh I yeah. Was like, All right. You want to play, you want to play Marvel? We can yeah. play. They heard you, uh, and yeah. digital codes came right back, right? Yeah, because I, I stopped buying physical comics from Marvel, and I canceled the, the Unlimited app. Whoa. Uh, but then they brought them back. Uh, so, uh, But I really like the service. I think from when it started, it, it definitely has improved a lot more uh, as far as just the reading experience. Uh, the library has keeps growing, right, because they keep scanning in things from old, plus Dude. new comics are getting there. You know, it used to be uh, six months that you had to wait to read something mm-hmm. on there. And it's now three months. They're also doing like a few select titles. Like they'll do one or two months uh, just mm-hmm. to kind of like really maybe boost sales or because I imagine that a lot of these people that if you read a good comic on there, you probably want to go buy it to own it or at least mm-hmm. maybe get the collection later. Mm, yeah. Um, collection. Maybe the maybe. collection later. Yeah. Not the probably not the singles. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Especially I like it when a it's- lot. Especially with these hot books that they're dropping. They're like, hey, uh, you can't buy this in your shop anymore. So uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number one is available. Uh, everybody could read it. Don't worry about it. Just pay us yeah, $9.99 yeah. a month, you know? <laughs> don't go out and pay $100 at a convention. Yeah, don't don't, yeah, don't yeah, take the photo that I took at C2E2 and buy Ultimate Spider-Man number one first printing for $100. For 100 <laughs> For the record, I did not buy that. I just took a photo of it because I thought it was so funny. <laughs> 
that god that's yeah that's this whole other episode um yeah. my my main issue with the marvel limited is that they don't have a desktop version for it it's all mobile like either ipad yeah. phone like, yeah yeah you're right there's no way to I, read your your comics from your library or from the service there's no way to read it anymore on on a desktop i don't know what happened you used to be able to do it yeah i, yeah. I used to do it all the time i don't know if it's maybe when comicsology stopped like it was maybe they were piggybacking off of their stuff. Uh, oh. I don't really know. I I don't know if they were. I I can't remember. I don't think Marvel was doing that. I know that Comicsology was had built their web store when you could buy digital comics directly on Marvel's website. That was actually a Comicsology branded site, okay. right? Um, or it was Comicsology, but it was rebranded yeah. for Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, but that's if if I had one complaint, that's really it. Because like I said, sometimes I just want to reference something on my, you know. We're getting ready for the show, and I'm on the computer. I just want to reference it on my my desktop. I don't want to go right. back and uh, or you know search for the title uh, or well, if I'm taking a break from doing something. So like, yeah, um, yeah. That's that's really my main complaint for them. Um, it seems like they're also reformatting a lot of old stuff into that infinite format, so you can just <laughs> infinitely scroll on your phone. It, I'm not a fan of that really, because that's not the original intent of the artist uh, how they laid yeah. it out. Uh, but if people are enjoying comics that way, I'm not going to be there at bus scale, right? If you well, love scrolling endlessly, endlessly. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. You know, we talk about this all the time on the show about Webtoon, right? Like, Webtoon is the new hotness. And it is the thing that is getting people to buy physical comic books, right? C- uh, collected editions of these web comics that they're reading for free. And then people go out and they buy the collections because they love this series so much, right? Like, I love at, love or Let's Play is a big one that, that came out, right? Like... I've seen that on a million shelves. There's that show that got made into an, a show on Netflix, right? Uh, yeah. About the two boys in love. I can't remember what that's called. Um, but I, like these are I, web. Go yeah, ahead. Every time I go into a bookstore, there's a new volume of Lore Olympus that has dropped. Uh, dude, like, oh I, my God. I'm one of those people. I love Lore Olympus and I buy the volume. They're these big, huge books. I have fucking nowhere to put them on my shelf, but I yeah. keep buying them because one, the series is beautiful. And two, like, Man, there, there is a there's a way that webtoon comics are written, especially when they're fiction, where they hook you at the end of every single one. Like it's it's so formulaic, but it's just like K dramas. It's just like a, like very classic you know, prime time television. They just, every episode ends with a thing that's going to bring you back next week. And that's right. exactly how webtoons are done. And or, of course, I I fucking love it. It's, make it's you amazing. Pay those coins to get the chapter ahead of time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. But like, so Marvel leaning into that and saying, hey, how can we compete with that is a very interesting idea because their books are pretty good. Marvel comic books are really good um, for the most part, um, despite what I may have said on a bunch of other episodes of the show. (laughs) Um, So (laughs) but for them to say, "Okay, if you like to read it that way, if that'll get you into gods, if that'll get you into Ultimate Spider-Man, if that'll get you into all these number ones that are the new hotness, the basically just put Jonathan Hickman's name plastered on it and, you know, they'll release it early. Um, If that'll get you into this book, then let's give it to you in the format that you prefer. So I I don't see an issue with it. I agree with you. I think that it kind of goes against the artistic intent because I was reading God's number one and I finished it and I went, oh, what's this vertical comic? And I started going through it. And I was like, whoa, this is a different book entirely. Like this feels like a totally different comic, even if I'm getting told the same story. But it definitely like the vibe is very, very different. Um, or, or so the, I don't know. I, I do like that they're experiment. They're using it to experiment, right? They recently dropped the um, Hox Pox uh, Chronological and, I have not seen that. Oh, Mike, it's the it's Hoxbox, but it's in chronological order. Like okay. it, all all ten books, they rearranged everything in a way that it you see everything happening, uh, and and then you also just scroll vertically. It is insane to read. I I read a little bit of it. I didn't go through the whole three hundred pages because sure. I mean I've already read that story, uh, but also it is it is a wild ride to just. Uh, so if if they're gonna do experimental stuff like that, I think that's fun. Uh, it also gives you as it gives me more value. I feel right, even if I'm sure. not using it, I know it's there. Like I can always go check it out. So mm-hmm. um, they're pretty good about e- like their emails updates as well. Like they're pretty good at letting you know like this is what's new now, right? All the ultimate lines here now. You can read all the number one stuff like that. Uh, so I think Marvel's got a. The one thing that I think they'll eventually do is to try to compete with DC is lower that threshold from three months to maybe two months or it's going to be in a couple of years. It's just going to be immediate, like same day. 
Well, uh, I mean, that's something that is a whole other discussion. I mean, yeah. if Marvel dropped this thing to one month, I'd be on X-Men. I'd be back, baby. I'd oh, do, yeah. I would be trailing. It would be a problem for everybody on this fucking podcast. I'd be, <laughs> I would be on X-Men like, like it would be, it would be a problem. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I, I, I feel you. The only, my, my gripe with Marvel Unlimited is that their search sucks. Um, and unless you know the exact title as it's written and the year that it came out and the issue number, you that's the only way to find anything. And even then, sometimes I'll go, I don't even know what that book is. And I'll go, I spelled it as you spelled it on your website. If I put a, didn't put a hyphen in Spider-Man, somehow you found it now? I just, that's my one gripe. Um, it, but their, their search stinks. They don't have a way really to follow anything. I mean, you can add things to your follow list, but it's not great. Um, it's fine. I don't know. I wish that I got notifications when new copies of my books actually showed up so I don't have to just open the app every day. Um, especially when you're following like 20 different books, they don't give you any indication as to what book actually updated the most recent. I mean, they kind of do, but like it doesn't like rearrange your list that right. you have. Um, I like Shonen Jump for that reason, right? Like I think we should, before we talk all night, I think we should also like talk about Shonen Jump in, in, in DC and stuff. But like, I like Shonen Jump for that reason. I can favorite a bunch of series. And then when the new chapters come out, my my little queue of favorited books gets rearranged. That's exactly yes. what I want out of Marvel Unlimited. That's, if they did that, I'd be happy. Because I mean, as much as of a pain it is for me to find anything, like my, the reading experience is fine. I feel like the navigation experience is fine. Like my biggest gripe is like, if i'm trying to read all the x books like and i have to jump around between series it's like 15 taps just to get to the next book which is a problem um but that is a thing i can maybe talk about at the end here um about some improvements that i wish any of these companies would make and they could get every single penny out of my fucking pocket but, or if it's a multi-title crossover but and they haven't most, made a if they haven't made a reading list yet oh because if they've made a reading list then you're good but if they haven't ish. Like, I mean, you're good in that you still have to go search. <laughs> you still have to use their terrible, terrible search to find yeah. the next issue, right? God help you if you're trying to read, you know, Avengers in any capacity. And then it's like, oh, read Avengers 47. You type Avengers 47, you get the 20 incarnations. Yeah, and yeah. The, the one from 2024 is all the way at the bottom for some reason. Like, <laughs> come on. Come on. Anyways, any, hope, but you're I right. Nobody's looking for an alien book. Good yeah. Luck. God bless. <laughs> yeah 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 so like there are some problems there but all otherwise like the marvel unlimited app is great like i actually think it's great um but there are improvements you know shonen jump has has fixed some of those improvements but that app has also has its own problems their site has its own problems you know um but yeah i don't know what are, what are your thoughts there and then we can we can I, jump into dc as well sure i have a little i, I love shonen jump app as well and this i mean they're pretty much the same thing they just have different access to yeah. you have a different access to things but yeah my only my only wish or gripe i guess is that sometimes i just i like reading my manga in volumes mm. but you can't do that on the app right right like, i wish they would let me know this is the start of volume 10 it goes all the way through this chapter um and, and mainly because of like how how you log it on Goodreads and stuff like that? Like I, you know, you I'm not logging individual chapters because mm -hmm. that <laughs> that's insane. Um, hey hey, listen, I got my own spreadsheet. Leave me alone, okay? I <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I so I have to go to the wiki of that manga, figure out which <laughs> chapters are on the volume I want to read, and then well, read it. So. I will say that Viz does a pretty good job of that on the desktop site. If you go and view the chapter list, they do break it down by volume if the volume has been published. Um, so that is something they don't do it on the app for, you know, because they don't want you to buy anything on the app. It's, it's supposed to be a free app, you know. Um, but yeah, if you go to the website and you look through the chapter list, it does break it down by volume, which I, I agree with you. That makes a lot of sense for people who are logging on Goodreads and most other places. They're not, you know, bonkers folks like me who's literally logging every single chapter you know that's that's a whole other discussion but 30 chapters of one punch man yeah all right i mean danny i'll show you some screenshots of my spreadsheet where i was reading one piece consistently and it's like 50 chapters of one piece in a row two chapters of one punch man and then like and then like 20 like two volumes of which had atelier then x-men like it's 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 pretty funny i just imagine if renee would do that like because he rereads <laughs> manga so much i know it looked like did you get lost and start over what's going on no, he would just be like, no, I just wanted to go read those first couple of arcs yeah. again before I got into the next one. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, like so so the Viz app, I really don't in the Shonen Jump app, I really don't have a lot to say about them because they work really well. Their readers are pretty good. Um the desktop reader is a little annoying because it doesn't easily navigate between oh, chapters. Yeah. You kind of have to do a lot of manual things. There if you have Chrome, there's a plugin that you can get that will like fix all of that, which I really, really appreciate. Um and it doesn't do anything awful to your computer, just a couple little lines of JavaScript. Um and it makes the reader bigger on your screen, which I really, oh, really cool. appreciate. Um but you know, I'll, I'll maybe post a link to that in the show notes. But uh, yeah, le- but let's talk about uh, the DC app, uh, the yeah, DC Unlimited yeah, yeah. subscription. How, if, how are your thoughts? You feel about if that? If you want to hear more about all the manga readers, uh, go check out our episode on that. Paloma, yeah. Kate, and I talked about all the manga, all the ways you can read manga online. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into DC. This DC Infinite Ultra Atomic. Uh, I don't know how many more descriptors they're gonna add to that service. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. I I have the ultra uh, tier because yeah, same it's you not only get access to books one like one month behind you also get access to read collected editions so if you want to just read it, the Batman omnibus for Graham Morris and you can just click on that and if they have it and they have a lot of their big stories collected mm-hmm. um, I I love the DC Infinite like it's probably the thing. I use the most, even though I get DC comps, like if I, whatever books I'm not reviewing, I just go back and read them on there. Even if I <laughs> yeah. bought them physically, like I'll just read them on there a month behind mm-hmm. uh, because I'm not in a rush to read those. Right. Yeah. Um, they've, they've also added their, their mangas. They released chapters there uh, for the DC manga. Oh, nice. Uh, so if you're not going out and buying the little taco bond, then you can just read chapter by chapter. Um, my, my big gripe with DC is that on the iPad, and I've reinstalled the app multiple times, you can only uh, navigate the app in horizontal mode, or sorry, in vertical mode. You can oh, read yes. horizontally. When you go into the actual comic, you can turn and mm-hmm. read horizontally. But as far as navigation, it has to be vertical. And I don't have a stand that makes my iPad be vertical. So it that it's like such a weird thing because it used to work. So I don't know if it's something that they broke, that they never went back to fix. Maybe. Um, like I said, I've reinstalled my app multiple times. I submitted an email to their support and, and they're like, oh, we'll look into it. And I don't know. That, that probably means that we're not doing anything about it. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. It's got a great backlog. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't know, Mike, what do you think of the DC app? No, I, I really have no complaints, right? Like every time I've used it, I really haven't had any issues with it. I mean, their app and their website work pretty seamlessly together. Like if you want to read stuff on the web, you want to read stuff on the app, it all feels consistent. I think that's what pe- readers want. I think that's what users on the internet want. When you open up an app and you open up the website, you kind of want them to function and have the similar like mannerisms and all these different things and habits that they build up. So like, I really don't have any complaints. Uh, the search is even pretty good. Yeah. Like if you search for Batman, like you can at least like find stuff and filter it in a way that like makes sense. Um, the Marvel one just doesn't do that. You know, um, Amazon doesn't do that very well. You know, um, I, I think that DC is kind of the contender here for like best search for comic books right yeah. now, just for DC books. But um, I would hope so. They own all the rights to it. What, what's Marvel doing? You know, but oh, one thing we kind of discovered uh, because of Paul doing a better Batmobile is that you can't re you can't share your reading list. Uh, mm. So like if Paul created a reading list for the show, he ideally we would put it in the show notes and anybody that has access to DC could follow along. Uh, I did reach out to them about that and they said they were working on that functionality, but it's probably not at the top of their queue either. Of course, of course. Um, I mean, so um, but yeah, I, I really like that one. I I, yeah. I don't it's the one I probably use the most after panels mm-hmm. uh, just because I read a lot of DC books. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I mostly just use panels and sometimes I use Marvel. I don't know. It almost makes me depressed to think about it. again. This is, this is where like the pit in my heart lives, right? <laughs> where I'm like, God, it's just so hard to read comic books digitally sometimes, right? Like for as great as panels is importing comics into it is, can be a real stickler, real pain, you know, um, for as nice as it is to have access to Marvel's massive backlog. God, is it a pain to find anything as, as nice as it is to have DC's backlist? 
there's really not any complaints. I'm just not a big DC reader, actually. So like you guys are lucky DC fans. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's it's there are all these hoops that we have to step through, right? Like even with with sites like uh, Libby or Hoopla, right, that you can get through your library. Uh, I yeah. think those are amazing, amazing tools. If you have a library that offers Hoopla, use it stop what you're doing stop buying comics well not completely but like go use hoopla because it is good and it works very well their reader is solid their ability to manage your comics and holds and stuff is very very good like that is a very solid reading experience but they don't have everything and what they have varies from location to location all sorts of stuff you know like it's it's frustrating that on like the discord we've got people that listen to the show from all, literally all over the world right yeah um a majority of people are from the united states um but all from different places in the United States. And so when Danny recommends something, another person will go, oh, that's not on my hoopla. And that is like so frustrating. frustrating. But again, it is nice that if that ever comes up, that person may be able to use that link in the future and it's a universal link and it may you know, show up. So like, please use it. But again, there's a little slight imperfection here. And it's like there, no one is doing everything correct and firing in all cylinders. So it's, it's kind of tough, right? Um, I don't know, Danny. I, I, I've got a, a couple last things to say, but, right. but I'll let you chime here, in here if you had thoughts here, about here's libraries. Here's my, my recommendation on how to use Hoopla to the best of its abilities. Let's say you have a certain budget for your comic books and you go to the shop and you see this little indie book that it's like creator owned and it's like the first thing. And then you have your next volume of Batman. <laughs> Save your yeah. money for yeah. the little indie book. And that volume of Batman will most likely be on Hoopla for your through your library, right? Um, so so that way you can kind of have your cake and eat it too because you're using the library, which also supports creators on their own way, mm -hmm. uh, and then you're also supporting the little creators where, like, maybe they can get their book into the library system, uh, but then you can buy it at the shop and then you own it as well. So right, uh, that's my recommendation. Use Hoopla to like expand that budget into like trying different stuff. Uh, because mm -hmm. the, all the big publishers, for the most part, their books are there uh, and collected editions. Some of them even do singles, which mm -hmm. if you want to use your borrows that way, I mean, maybe you're yeah. one of the lucky that has like 15 borrows a month or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so highly, highly recommend that. And if you haven't signed up for your for a library card, even if you don't think you're going to use it, you should uh, sign up because that's how they that's how they know what their budget needs to be. Right. Right. However many people are signed up. So. Right. It's uh, like if you use your library twice a year, that's at least saving you money trying books physically or digitally. You know, yep. um, I, I think that, you know, that's a great way to, to you know, we, I think we harp on this quite a bit on the show. But like, I think that's a great way to, like you said, expand your budget for comics. If there was a book that you weren't sure if you wanted to buy, try it at your library. And then if you do like it, go buy it afterwards. Right. Um, and, and especially when it comes to big two. Right. Like there, big two books are always going to be available like 95 percent of the time. A Batman book's not going to go out of print, right? Maybe some weird little offshoot Teen Titans book might not ever get printed again. But like the indie books that you were talking about, like that is the the thing that is never going to be back in print, right? And your dollar goes much further there than it does to Warner Brothers. So um, yeah, I guess like the last thing I want to talk about though, before we get continue to stand on this soapbox any further is like these last few little items that we have on my list here, like Kobo, sure. drive through Comics, um, and, you know, Humble Bundle kind of fits in the same thing where you're kind of just like going to these sites and buying comic book files directly from creators. Like, do you have a lot of experience with that, Danny? Have you used any of those ser services at all? Mainly from the list that you have here, mainly uh, Humble Bundle. Uh, okay. I think okay. That's just every month I check because I love having the PDFs uh, of the series. They have a lot of manga sales from like, publishers that are not this which really allows me to look into other this is that's how i discovered like fire force and um there's oh, what all in i think it's the one about rugby really all the sports okay. ones because the uh, uh blue lock i also discovered it through oh yeah through oh, one, though. so like blue lock yeah. baby that's right uh but i i hadn't even heard until you put this list together i hadn't even heard of like kobo or drive through comics. So if you want to talk a little bit more about those. Yeah. So Kobo is a really interesting one, right? Um, because they are like a Kindle alternative, right? They're Rakuten Kobo, I think is the name of the company completely. And they're like an ebook distributor. Uh, they sell ebooks to people. And so they have their own readers that are very similar to Kindles. But their thing is like, 
they sell a lot of stuff, right? Like I'm looking at their website right now. You can buy Death Note. You can buy Full Metal Alchemist. You can buy Attack on Titan. You can buy, uh, there's a lot of manga on here. Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Like they do big old sales and stuff of different things. Um, I, I don't see any big two stuff. So I think it's like non big two. Um, they've got a bunch of things tied in. I mean, they've got every sh- single book genre that you could ever think of, but like, Oh, so they, and I'm looking at it right now. They've got some Daredevil epic collections, Doctor Strange, Full Metal Alchemist. I already said that. Invincible Iron Man, Captain America. You know, they've got a copy of God Loves Man Kills. Oh man, am I buying this today? Can I get a copy of this for real? That's crazy. Um, So yeah, like Kobo is very interesting because they are a Kindle competitor. That is their whole thing is that they're trying to sell not just comics, but they're also selling like, you know, prose books to people with the dedicated reader that is supposed to basically be an alternative to Amazon. So if you're looking for an alternative to Amazon, like Kobo, I think is a good like example of a company trying to do things right. Um, I can't really speak to the the company overall. I've I really only like touched on it. I've seen there's a couple of companies that do sales um, of eBooks and they're like, hey, you can get this and then redeem it on Kobo. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Like there was a, um, I think a Discworld Humble Bundle where you weren't actually getting the eBook files. You could redeem them on Kobo. So they might have their own little ecosystem that you get um, kind of tied into. Um, so yeah, I, interesting. I, again, the fact that God Loves Man Kills is on here makes me really curious if I can get the eBook copy of that. Because if I could own it, Anyways, that's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> oh, it has Adobe DRM. There we go. That's the that's the thing. Um, but Drive Through Comics is another really interesting one that um, I've known about for a while. As I use Drive Through RPG like pretty regularly oh. as like a huge nerd um, who plays tabletop RPG games. Drive Through Comics is like that company. Drive Through Drive Through GM, the DMs Guild. They do a bunch of other things. Um, but this is specifically for comics. Um, I see some interesting stuff on here, like Exo Man of War is on here. Uh, Timothy Green. There's a bunch of like comics that I don't know the names of. These are not exactly like big name comics, you know, but they do sell both a combination of physical and digital comics all in one. Um, so it's it's an interesting little ecosystem um, where they, you know, you can buy some comics and some rpg stuff i think they do bundles where you can buy comics and rpgs together when there's tie-ins so like it's another place that you could potentially buy comics and for the most part you get the actual you know digital copy that you can download like as a pdf or ebook so um it's just another place it's okay i don't know i have a lot of tabletop rpg stuff through them and i I like their system overall so if i could buy more comics through them that'd be cool but again it's just the pdfs or epubs or whatever you get so yeah, I see a few publishers that I recognize. Like Top Cow has comics here. Obviously, oh, you here's, mentioned Valiant. Here's where uh, you can buy your your Dynamite, Dynamite comics. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just there noticed you go. that we did it. We found it. We found it. Okay, okay. Um, so um, yeah, I, I, it's interesting. You know that these these places exist out there. You know, like I, I think we're going to see over time. Hopefully, none of these really drop off. I would like to see a thriving ecosystem of different things. Um, we don't necessarily need to get back into a situation where we have just the one place to get things because then there's this bottleneck of when they eventually or if they go belly up, like you potentially lose all your stuff or you end up in a situation where you don't necessarily like the ecosystem anymore. So um, I do like that there's a whole bunch of stuff. I think we didn't mention Google Books as a place, but that's also a place where you can buy things. Yeah. iBooks, technically, I think you can buy comic yeah, books I've, through I've, as well and Amp- Apple. I read a comic on my Apple TV before. <laughs> That's the like dream when, right there, man. When they That's launched the, the service, they were given away, and I was like, I'll grab that Batman number one and read it again. Yeah. So. I mean, do you remember back in the day when you could buy individual c- copies of comic books as apps through the iTunes store? Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I ever did that. That sounds not ideal. I, I, I maybe told this story before, um, and I'll, I'll use this to wrap up the episode, but like back in the day, I was really into the comic book proof. Um, which is about Bigfoot who joins this like cryptozoology FBI style thing. Um, And you could buy individual issues of proof as individual apps on the iTunes app store. And so I think somewhere in my iTunes history, I own like issues one through seven of these apps. And each of them were just self-contained apps that when you open it up, it immediately opened up the Comixology app. And I found out about this years later. Um, I want to say like even in the last two years, I found out about this, that these were like custom made apps made with in partnership with Image Comics to sell these things that just opened up the Comixology comicsology reader and just read through one issue of a comic book um pretty pretty bonkers if you ask me but like i don't know they didn't have a solution back then right <laughs> i guess that so- sounds wasteful to me 
Yeah, it, it seems <laughs> digitally wasteful, right? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so Danny, I appreciate the conversation today. Um, I think there's there's even more I probably could say. Like, why doesn't anybody have a queue system? Like the ability to just like, hey, I want to read these six comics in a row. When I finish one, just start the next one. I've, I'm smart. I know what I want to read. Don't try to pitch me anything. You know, why doesn't anybody have that? If anybody did that, I'd, I'd double down all my money and dedication to them. Yeah, um, I but- think unfortunately it feels like a lot of these are like they are they just have enough resources allocated to make sure that the store is up and then anything else that we get out of that it's like a bonus i know uh so yeah just just i want to just get contracted by marvel for like six months let me just just let me in for six months and let me build this thing and i'll get in and get out and I promise you it will make you a ton of money. Like they, I think the also part of this is that a feature like that seems risky because they're like, well, who's going to use this? And it's like, everybody's going to use this. You just don't, you don't see it because you don't really understand how your readers work, right? Like right. maybe, and maybe it's, I'm just way too dedicated of a reader where I'm trying to read 10 books at once, right? And maybe that's not the majority of readers. But I think that like multiple comic book fans that I read, the people that are the quote unquote big whales spending money in these apps, and, and on these websites and all the on, and their local comic book shop and stuff, these are people that want that type of feature because you want to be able to jump between Captain America and X Force and then Spider Man. Like, just at a click of a button, you should be able to just add these books to a queue and it would just work. But I, I will literally let anyone take that idea for free. Please, God, just build it. That's all that I want. So, ugh. I guess that's all I had to say. I, we've gotten it all out of my system, Danny. So thank you for for Great. letting me I'm soapbox. Glad. We only did this episode so that Mike wouldn't turn into a hollow from that <laughs> from that missing part of him of himself. Uh, yes, yes, that absolutely. Was for the Bleach fans uh, out there. Yeah. Thank you. Now I'm gonna go back and read reread Bleach. I'm gonna stop my Naruto run and I'm gonna start reading Bleach tonight. Um, JK, I can't do that again. Um, but anyways, Danny, any any final thoughts before we sign off here? Any last thoughts about digital comic books and the state of the digital comic book industry? No, the, the last thing I'll say, and obviously we didn't even get to like international stuff and implications Ugh. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say like before you pirate a comic, just tr- just do your best to read it legally somehow. Right. Uh, I understand that sometimes it's not in the budget or maybe it's not even available to you. Um, and if you do, don't go bragging about it to the creator that you stole the work <laughs> from. <laughs> please uh honestly if anybody can't find a comic book legally to read online email me at ircbpodcast at gmail.com and i will search the internet far and wide using my superpowers of capability of google um to find it for you i promise that's the part where you should ask the creator hey how can i read this legally yeah 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 that's exactly that's that's where you had that interaction with them because at least they know you're trying to get their work so exactly um, well, that's a great way to sign things off, Danny. Thank you again for your time. This is a blast. I'm glad I got to talk about the state of things. Maybe we'll do another one of these in six months, see how things are going. Um, that could be pretty fun. But, um, you know, I guess uh, I want to say thank you again to everybody listening. Thank you to all the folks that just read comic books legally. You're great. You're making the comic book industry work. Uh, Xander, for, for editing this episode, I want to say thank you to him. And I guess until next time, comics are good, and so are you. Yeah.